Okay, Blue, I know you want to go out for recess. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll go out to recess. But let me find my keys, okay? I just need to... Where, where did they go? <gasps> Blue, did you eat my keys? Miss D, did you see him eat my keys? Do you think he ate my keys? Uh-oh, Blue, did you eat her keys? <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh, do you have an x-ray machine? Because I, I think I'm going to go get the x-ray machine. Yeah, Come go on, for Blue. it. Oh. <gasps> Alright, Blue, let's check out your x-ray. Uh-oh, Mrs. Nosita. It looks <gasps> like he <gasps> ate my keys. You ate my keys? You are in so much trouble. I cannot believe you ate my keys. What are we going to do to get the... I don't even want to think about it. Alright, man. Wait a second. Was there also a spider web in your stomach? Also, do you not have any bones? Uh, I guess it's because you're made out of plastic. But I also like that little uh, x-ray you drew of your paw. That's pretty cool. Maybe we should make our own awesome x-rays this week. Good idea, Blue. For today's project, you will need one piece of colored construction paper, a permanent marker, a black crayon, one q-tip, and some vegetable oil. Today, we're going to create an x-ray of our hand and our upper arm. So, an x-ray. An x-ray is a type of radiation called electromagnetic waves. X-ray images create pictures of the inside of your body. The image shows parts of your body in different shades of black and white. This is because different tissues absorb different amounts of radiation. So, doctors use x-rays to see if your bones are broken and for other various reasons. Here is an x-ray of a hand. My friends, when you are looking at the x-ray, you can see all the different bones and the different joints. The joints are where the bones are coming together, and if you take a look at your hand, where your hand and fingers move, that's where you have a joint. So, let's look at the bones in our hand. First and foremost, starting with the forearm, we have the ulna and radius. Moving down in our wrist, and you can actually take your hands and feel them right now, you have your carpals in your wrist. Your metacarpals are the bones that are in the palm of your hand. And then the extended fingers we call the phalanges. We can get a lot more technical with all these names, like distal phalanges will be the very farthest bone of your finger, but we're going to keep it simple for now. So let's create an x-ray of our hand for spooky spooky spookiness. Let's do it! To begin, I have my pencil, my marker, my crayon, and my paper. I'm gonna take my watch off and my ring off. I'm using my non-dominant hand to be traced, so that's the hand I don't write with. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna take my hand and forearm and try to center it on my paper. I don't want it too low. That's not taking up enough space. I don't want it right in the middle with my fingers together. I want them spread out. So when we trace, it's super important my hand stays still and my pencil is facing the ceiling, not the wall. So we want them upright. Pencil is upright. I put it right next to my arm and I slowly begin to trace. So pay attention to where my eraser is pointed. It's always pointed up. This way I don't look like a bear has eaten my hand when I'm done. So if yours looks a little bit funky, maybe it's because you're tipping your pencils. Pay close attention to how you are tracing. All the way, all the way down. Oh, there we go. Hey, you can't see it because I use pencil on construction paper. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this. I decided to trace my pencil line with marker so you guys can see what I'm doing. Again, you don't have to do this. Crayon is what we really want. But if you're like, I'm gonna copy Mrs. Nosita no matter what, go for it. So look at that, you see my thumb, or should I say my phalange? You should probably call them phalanges, right guys? We're gonna get our technical terms going down. My phalanges, got some phalanges, I'm gonna trace them. All right. While we are uh, continuing to do an x-ray of our hand, it's important that you are actually looking at your hand and looking at all the joints, okay? Because that's going to tell us, give us some pretty big information. So my joint is where my finger can move. 
So if you're paying attention to how they move, see, here we go, movement, where they move, I'm feeling a joint. So I'm looking at my finger, here's a couple of joints here and here, and from where I'm feeling it, this is where I'm going to be making some little lines. So what's kind of cool about tracing your own hand is you can actually put your hand down for measurement. So I'm feeling my metacarpals in my uh, palm of my hand. Metacarpal, metacarpal, metacarpal. Oh, up to a phalange now. Feeling all my joints. So feel the joints in your finger because that's going to help us out. Okay? So I'm going to take my crayon and I'm going to feel my thumb. Okay, well here is a joint. So about right about in here, okay, I'm going to make a line for a joint. There is my joint line. Okay, going down, feeling another knuckle. There's another joint line. So I'm just making little marks for where all my joint lines are. Next finger, here's my joint line. And actually, I'm setting my finger down right next to it so I can get an accurate measurement. Scooch down, there's another joint line and another joint line. Good job, phalanges. Okay, here's another joint line. Little mark for joint line, joint line, joint line. Next finger. Here's a joint line, scooch down, another joint line. So if you're actually looking at our fingers, a pattern here, we have three joint lines and two joint lines in our thumb. And then I'm gonna feel my wrists. Oh, cause I'm bending my, I can, I'm able to bend my wrist. So that would be another joint line. So I'm gonna make a little mark down about, feeling it again right about in here. I made a little bit of a broken line for that joint line. And then I'm gonna to start to feel, well, no, I think I'm good. Okay, now we're gonna to start to draw. So when we are drawing here, we're gonna draw almost like an oval. So from the top of my thumb down in, it's gonna look kind of like it's a thumbnail, making an oval to my joint line. The next line I'm gonna fill all the way down, another oval from joint line to joint line. And from that, Second joint line all the way down to my wrist is a new long oval. So the next row, making little ovals. And those are going to be my bones from joint line to joint line. So don't forget your metacarpals, the bones in your palm of your hand, because those are important too. Joint line. From one joint line to another, making some bones. Spooky, spooky, spooky x-ray hand. I'm going to keep this up. So I'm going to continue from the top of my finger to that joint line, make an oval. From one joint line to the next, make an oval. Make an oval from joint line to joint line. And metacarpal joint line. Add that bone. And my last finger. Here we go. Oval. Oval. And you guys, if you're having a really hard time drawing with crayon, it's okay if you jump with marker. I have done this before in marker and it's worked out just fine. Uh, so there you go. Now wrist. Those are the carpals. There are eight carpals in your wrist. So I'm drawing some kind of circular ovalish bones that make up my wrist. And I'm going to count them out and make sure that I have eight represented. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to re reach down and feel my ohm and my radius. So I'm going to draw a long line. It's going to turn at the top and come back down. And I'm going to do it again. And that's my ohm and my radius. Okay, take a look. That's kind of a weird looking hand right now. Doesn't quite look like an x-ray yet because we got to fill in the negative space. So in between my bone and the edge of my hand line, I'm going to color it really nice and neat. I'm going to fill it in black. So the bones that we added, we're not going to color in. They stay blank. Everything else from the edge of my hand that I drew first, from what I traced, 
to the bone we drew gets nicely covered black. So guys, this is level four coloring here. If you're going to speed through it and not actually do it, we have a problem. It's gonna look quite yucky, okay? So super slow. If you want your x-ray to turn out, slow and steady. If you have a bunch of gaps here and there, it's not gonna look like an x-ray. It's gonna look like some sort of weird hand, okay? So nice and steady. So I am super taking my time as I go through this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna speed up my coloring so I'm not actually going this fast remember that okay so once I uh, speed it up that doesn't mean you try to go as fast as me you take your time so you can pause it if you need to but maybe pause it at the end of my little uh, coloring session so that you can see what it should look like okay so I'm gonna speed up my video now Okay, so I have the space that is around my bones all colored black. It's not 100% perfect coloring, but I really took my time and really tried to fill that space in. So now I have all these bones that are showing up, and this is where I need my next set of materials. I need a little bit of vegetable oil and a Q-tip. So if I don't have a Q-tip, a tiny little paintbrush will work just fine, but I need those materials ready to do the next section. Vegetable oil can get a little bit messy, so make sure you're not overloading your Q-tip. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this vegetable oil and we're going to be putting it on top of our bones. So, remember what part of your hand are the bones. The bones is what we drew. From joint to joint, we should have the phalanges, the metacarpals, the carpals, the ulna, and the radius. So make sure you have that all set and done before you begin throwing vegetable oil all over it. Okay, so <clears throat> got my vegetable oil. Da 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 da! Vegetable oil made out of pure vegetables. I don't know, maybe I don't know. I don't make vegetable oil. So I'm gonna unscrew the cap, add a little bit in, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to begin. Okay. So, once I have my vegetable oil set and ready, I load my brush or my Q-tip, I dip it on in, and you really don't need that much. So I have a teeny bit in my cup, and I'm going to start to coat my bones. So, I give it a good helping. I don't really skimp out on the vegetable oil when I add it, but if you overload it, you don't want it to kind of go all over the place. So be careful. It's not very much fun to clean up vegetable oil because it's like greasy. Filling in the bones. And I'm putting I'm gonna start up here so that I don't drag my arm through it as I go. You know me. 
a lot of times I just turn my paper as I'm working so that I don't get messy messiness. It's not really me that I'm worried about it's getting messy. It's my project. If I dip my hand in vegetable oil and I move my paper and I track my hand through it, it's going to make my paper look funky. I am kind of a walking mess, so I'm okay with getting it all over me, but I gotta save my art project, guys. Alright, so I'm taking my paintbrush and the vegetable oil and painting it over some bones. Which bones are these that I'm painting over right now? Hmm? <gasps> Did someone say metacarpals? You are so correct. You go, guys. You guys are awesome. Bones, bones, bones. All right, so if I really want to get super technical with our terms here, I just filled in a distal phalange, which is the bone that's upmost. And now I'm on to my proximal phalange. Now here's my metacarpal. Metacarpal, painting it nice with vegetable oil. Do, 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 painting. Mm-hmm. Okay, going back up. Oh, I'm going to my distal phalange, my middle phalange, my proximal phalange, and my metacarpal. No, I'm not doing this from memory. I have a cheat sheet in front of me that I'm looking at. Now, distal phalange, oh, I started different. Distal phalange, middle phalange, proximal phalange, metacarpal. Metacarpal. Now we're going to get to my carpals. And actually, the eight different bones all have different names. And I don't know which one is which, so I'm just going to name them. Trapezium, trapezoid, scaphoid, lunate, triquetral. I probably didn't say that one right. Hemate, and capitate. Those are the eight carpals. And then my ulna. Actually, no, I think my hand is rotated. This would be my radius. Whoops. I knew that. I was testing you. Radius. Radius. I don't know what I'm doing in my camera, but ignore me. Do, do, do. There we go. Back on track. Radius. All right. So, guys, why are we adding vegetable oil to our x-ray? Well, if you took a look at the x-ray before, you saw that it was kind of cool and like glowy and a little bit see-through and opaque. So if I held it up to a window, the light could come through my x-ray a little bit. So essentially by adding this vegetable oil, it's making the paper a bit thinner where we're adding it. So when you hold it up to the light, you should be able to kind of see some light coming through. So it's a pretty cool effect. All right, get in my ohm done. Go Alma, it's birthday. Okay, sorry. All right, so, ta-da, I did it. Eha. let's take a look-see. Hmm. Uh, do I have any broken bones? Uh, I don't know. All right, let's take a walk and see it in the light, shall we? And there it is in the light. Ooh, x-ray E. Oh man, any broken bones? I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how to diagnose stuff, but fancy x-ray. All right, take a picture. Upload it on Seesaw. Show me. I want to see them. Good job.